bright duty every student matters now coming to discuss with a topic mahavira who was born in 540 bc and died in 468 bc mahavira was preceded by 23 tirthankars he was preceded with 23 tirthankars and the tirthankars are teachers who guide men and women across the river of existence river of existence means that the human life what we are today so tirthankar its a simple meaning is teacher first tirthankar was rishab deva this was the name of the first tirthankar 23rd was parshnath and the last was lord mahavira he was born in kundal grama this is the musafarpur district in present day bihar near vaishali this is the district musafar district present day it is in bihar and this district is nearby vaishali his father was siddharth and mother was jantriya chief belongs to chhatriya class this is about the configuration of his father he, his name was siddharth and he was the chief of the jantriya tribe but he himself belonged from the kshatriya clan mother name was trishala and she was from the lichvi lichvi was mahajanpadas she was princess from there his wife's name was yasoda and having a daughter also at the age of 30 he left home and after 12 years he attained knowledge after leaving his home at the age of 30 then 12 years he meditated meditation was done for 12 years and finally he attained knowledge and he passed away this great man died at the age of 72 again this place is in bihar only the name is pavapuri so what it says about that in the 6th century bc the center of political gravity and the focus of civilization shifted eastwards in the modern region of avadh and bihar what we have avadh nowadays in uttar pradesh and eastward direction what we have discussed this aryans were from the north western side now we are shifting towards the eastern side of the country avadh and bihar to the south of the ganga river a large number of territorial kingdom which is republics and sprung up in the gangetic plain republic means that hereditary rulers were not there they were just elected this period also witnessed the rise of the 63 religious sects and the movements many of these sects were based on the religious customs and rituals and current among the people of the northeast india two have survived until today they are buddhism and jainism both this just now in the previous slide only we have discussed about this the debates and all what it is the 64 sects are there but in those when they have shifted towards the north eastern side bihar or the and bihar then this debate and discussions were there but all they have lost their significance among them only two are surviving nowadays also that is buddhism and jainism this is now what it says this is the mahavira is considered as the founder of jainism and the buddha is considered as the founder of buddhism this is about that the lord mahavira what message has been given by him we are coming to discuss about this the message of mahavira what is the message given by him which was completely based on the ideas of jain philosophy the message which is been given by lord mahavira also gives the idea about the philosophy of the jainism 
on what the Jainism has been followed by the people. The entire world is animated. Even stones, rocks and water, they have life. No injury to living beings, especially to humans, animals, plants and insects. This is the main philosophy of Jainism. The cycle of birth and rebirth is saved through karma. What we have discussed in the previous slides about that, the performance of the sacrifices, we can get salvation. But here now, Lord Mahavira, he has started giving, throwing light upon that, how we can get freedom from the cycle of birth and rebirth with the help of our good deeds, with the karma. Asticism, asticism and the penance are required to free oneself from cycle of karma. Devotion of our life, to work for that, the welfare. Asticism means that we must have to keep ourselves away from the worldly places. To get the penance, to get the salvation from this life. This can be attained only by renouncing the world. Therefore, monastic existence is a necessary condition of salvation. To lead a life of a sees, muni, then only we can have to think about that, about the salvation, about the freedom from the cycle of rebirth. Then what is the message given by Lord Mahavira? Mahavira did not believe in the existence of God. This is very important thing. He did not believe in the existence of God. He did not believe that God created and controlled the whole universe. He is also not having and giving any concept about that, how the universe is been controlled, the cosmic order. He was not given the any, he did not believe actually about all these things. It was all waste of time to recite the mantras or perform the sacrifices. He was all against this. The recitation of the mantras and the hymns which has been written in our Vedas and to perform the sacrifices is no way to get the salvation. The three essentials for good life which was suggested by him is right faith, right knowledge and right action. This is the three essentials he has suggested to his followers. These three things were called the three jewels or ratnas. This is the three jewels of the misses given by Lord Mahavira and considered by him as the jewels of our life, ratnas of our life. Jan monks and nuns must take five vows. If suppose one is just following the or becoming the followers of Jainism and try to become the Jan monks or nuns, they must have to take these five vows. What are these? These are actually about to abstain from killing, not to kill the animals. Abstain from stealing. Then abstain from lying to observe celibacy, means the purity, away from the sexual life, married life. To away, abstain from possessing property, not to acquire property. If we, they try to become Jain monks or nuns, they must have to follow these five vows. Then it is about that, the spread of Jainism. The teachings of Mahavira were recorded by his disciples. He has not written anything by himself. His disciples has, they have recorded about his teachings and these were in the forms of stories which, which could appeal to ordinary people. <clears throat> not like that the Vedas, their mantras, their chantings, their difficult, the rhyming ways. It is not like that. In a simple form, whatever the teachings and the philosophy of Jainism, which has been given, imparted by Lord Mahavira, were recorded by his disciples and they have started telling to the ordinary people 
in a form of a story. Jain scholars produced a wealth of literature in a variety of languages such as Prakrit, Sanskrit and Tamil and preserved in libraries attached to the temples. Wherever they have a Jain temple, these were written in the different languages and also preserved by their disciples. In the Jain temple, one attachment is there where kept in a which is considered as a library, which has been declared as library and in that library they were keeping all these, the Jain literature as a wealth which has been produced by the Jain scholars. Gradually Jainism is spread to many parts of India. Many stone sculptures connected with the Jain traditions have been recovered from the several sites. Wherever he moved to impart his philosophy about the life which is considered as the Jain text, sculptures connected with the Jain tradition have been recovered from the different sites of our country. Means that he himself travelled from one part to another, stayed for, there for the sometimes. So, the facts were available and it has been collected from the different sites from our country. Gautam Buddha. After this Lord Mahavira, we are coming to discuss about Gautam Buddha. This is the part which we are coming to discuss about that the spread of Jainism and Jainism. Jain Sangha. Jain Sangha is actually what it says that the members of the Jain Sangha were divided into four categories. Bhikkhus, Vikunis, then Shravaks and the Shravikas. The first two categories were ascetics and the other two were householders. <clears throat> the Bhikkhus and Vikunis were forbidden to enter into any trade or profession or to hold any property. This is actually the categorization done. And they were <clears throat> to beg food and to partake it with other bhikkhus. Bhikkhus is, might be a the prakrit or pali word, which means that beggar. In English term, English word we can say them or tell them as a beggar. So they were this bhikkhus and bhikkhunis, what they were doing? They are not supposed to possess property. So how they are? They are not supposed to live the or to lead the life of the of a householder. So how they were trying to live their lead their life with the help of the begging. They were not even allowed to wear shoes or use umbrella to protect themselves from the sun or rain. So this way, the strict rules were there followed by the bhikkhus and bhikkhunis who they were known as the Jain monks and nuns. Then, this religion is also been divided into the two different sects, Digambaras and the Swetambaras. These are the two different sects of the Jainism, Digambars and the Swetambars. The great schism, the great migration of the Jain under the, this is the Bhadrabahu, to the South India was also the beginning of a schism in the Jain religion. This is about a dispute. The Jains of the North and the South India on some religious practices. How this religion, the Jainism has been divided. The practice which is been followed in the Northern India and the Southern India. They had a, miss, a little difference between them. So, this led to the division of the Jains into Digambaras and the Swetambaras. This Jainism has been divided into two parts. This is Digambaras and Swetambaras. The essential difference, what is the difference and why the difference took place? The two sects is that the Digambaras were the orthodox followers of Mahavira, which was holding Bhadrabahu in his high stream. And they do go completely naked. 
this digambaras they were considered as the miss orthodox and they were completely naked they believe that the sky was the nature over the body and hence they do not wear any clothes this is the orthodox belief of the digambaras the followers of the parsanath they were this is about that they lead their life in the nature life of torture and penance swetambaras on the other hand wear white clothes swetambara swet means white these people they wear white clothes and they are the followers of parsanath these digambaras were the orthodox what they were they were orthodox and these swetambaras they wear the white cloth and they were the followers of parsanath and they keep fast but do not believe in extreme penance and the austerity and consider the fulfillment of obligations towards the society important so this way the swetambaras and digambaras they were the two different sects with their the difference in the practices the jain practices they have divided themselves then it is about that the tirthankaras the jains followed most of the doctrines preached by vardhaman mahavir in the 6th century as he was born only in the 6th century so whatever the doctrines the theory the philosophy is been given by vardhaman mahavir is been followed as a jain tradition they believe that in the tirthankaras tirthankaras means that the teachers and pathfinder so this is about that they hold that jainism is as old as the vedic religion and it is the outcome of the teachings of 24 tirthankaras tirthankaras including lord mahavira so mahavira was the 24th and the last tirthankar in the early period the jain constructed stupas but in the beginning of the christian era they started constructing temples in which they installed the images of lord mahavira as well as the earlier tirthankaras and worship them so this is what about that in before the beginning they have also started constructing their stupas but gradually they have shifted towards the construction of the temples and the statues and the images of these tirthankaras were placed in these temples so this is about the importance of the tirthankaras means the pathfinder the teachers who they have given their philosophy about the jainism but the most important philosophy of lord mahavira is only been considered as a jain text then jainism and hinduism how this the jainism and hinduism they are difference in their practice why their principles are different the jain considered themselves as hindu it's a very simple thing they also considered themselves as hindus differing from them only in certain philosophical and theological principles in the religious belief they were different jains considered jains were the hindus but only in theological means that the religious philosophy they were or they are different Jainism is rather a non-conformist type of Hinduism and something completely apart, completely different. Because Hinduism is completely based on that the principle of Vedas. That way, these Jains they do not believe in Vedas. In Jain temples, there are statues of Brahmanical gods along with those of the Tirthankaras. The caste structure of Hindu society was completely untouched. and the brahmans were used for domestic worship today the relationship of jains and the some hindus caste is also close that it is difficult to say where one ends and the other begins so it's a very difficult to differentiate between the jains and the hindus 